In this module, I want to show you a few more things about forest plots using metaphor in R. I already showed you how to segment the data and uh, create a nice looking plot. But um, as I said before, you oftentimes want to have your um, plot look a certain way and um, R will let you do that. All right, so I want to show you how I created this graph. Um, we need first to run the meta-analysis, so I've got an effect size, and uh, we're doing sleep data, and the result of that is an object called sleep.res3, and there's the meta-analysis, and now I'm going to create a PDF graph. Okay, so let's look at what it says. It says PDF class sleep disorder figure 3 PDF. All right, so this is the name of the output file that's going to be holding the graph. And here it says family equals time, so the um, font is going to be a times font. And here I've said height is 10.5, and that's in inches. Width is 7 inches. Um, and I have set the margins to be um, pretty small so that there's lots of space for my uh, graph. Now, if I had output this instead of a PDF, instead of as a PNG, notice I would instead of saying sleep disorder, I could I would say file name equals, and so the format for specifying the output file is different. And here, um, width and height and resolution are in uh, pixels instead of inches. So if you use different kinds of output format, you're going to need to pay attention to um, the way that it the way that it works so the format's actually different um, the one I'm going to use now is the PDF you can see this uh, is commented out okay so we have a PDF and now um, we ask it for a forest and that's based on the output of the meta analysis that you saw um, this I explained in a previous uh, video and this and this um, okay so this uh, model for all studies you will get if in your meta-analysis you didn't ask for a, uh, a moderator here. So I'm going to put the moderator in later and I'm just running this as a meta-analysis altogether at the moment. That gives me an overall value and then um, I want that overall value to say our e-model for all studies. So if we go down here to the bottom of this graph, you will see our e-model for all studies. And there's my uh, global estimate. And here it says, you know, here's my relative risk. Here's my overall estimate. And that comes from that um, model with all of the data. All right. Um, slab. All right. So um, this is study labels. Paste sleep dot author sleep debt year and sleep debt resolve and separate them by a space. So you can see I've got uh, Benito Leon and 2004 and then uh, qualifying information or resolving information. I'm going to show you where that comes from in my input file. So I used a uh, red Excel and I have an author column, I have a year column, and I have a resolve column. So if I'm going to do this kind of uh, work it's helpful to have separate columns for each of these. Um, I initially had this uh, stuck onto the year, but doing that, when I sort by year when it's not numeric, when it's alpha, the sorting uh, routine is different, and so you don't get the chronological um, order that you want. So I separated them out, and uh, now it, uh, it looks right. So, for example, uh, Blackwell 2006 comes before Blackwell uh, 2014. Okay, um, let's see what else. All right. uh, and the separation is by the space. Okay, uh, at CEX. All right, so now we get to uh, rows and Y lim or Y limits. So I'm going to explain the Y limits and then the rows. So Y limits um, tell where the the the, uh, the top and the bottom of the graph are. So up here is about 63 
and down here is about minus one. And the graph starts at zero, okay, and then it goes one, two, three, four, it goes rows up. Um, and so what happens is if you just do the default, uh, it may not have enough space up here, and if that's the case, this line will be down here someplace, and, <laughs> and the, these studies will be cut off, and um, it'll be rather a mess. So you'll need to uh, play with that until you get um, good values for uh, the wind limits. Um, all right, so now we're ready to talk about the rows. And you see I've got rows, and it says uh, 42 to 59, 31 to 38, 17 to 27, and 3 to 13. So uh, as I said before, the bottom of the table is 0. And um, I've got 1, 2, 3 rows here at the bottom. I'm so, well, maybe I have one, two, three. And one, two rows here at the bottom, and the third one is going to start my data. So um, rows three through thirteen will be these studies, and where I got that is uh, all right. So I'm going to go down the, the bottom, which is my fourth um, level of the moderator, and here's number three. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So it uh, goes from 3 to 13, and those are my data that will appear in here. All right, and it's going to go from uh, Chang to Yaffe, and you notice, interesting thing here, is that they're inverted here in the graph. So I had to sort it one way here for it to appear like this here. But the thing you need to know, that was 3 through 13, and now I'm going to skip three spaces because I'm going to want to put the label in here, and then I'm going to put the output for the, um, the group above here. So I went, um, uh, you know, uh, 1 and 2, I reserved to put this subgroup in here. And now I'm going to skip three because I, I, I want to put one row for this and then I need a couple rows for that. All right, so let's see. Uh, so that was um, through 13, so 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27. All right, so there are those and let's minimize that. And let's look here. So um, now we want 17 through 27, and that will give us these studies here. All right, so I'm going to leave another gap um, between uh, 27 and 31, and then between 38 and 42. So I have spaces to put all my subgroups. And that's it for the initial forest plot. So if I just look at that forest plot, it will have um, the data in it and it'll have this, but it'll be missing the, it'll just have blanks here, so there won't be any subgroup here and there won't be any label or subgroup here. So to, to get that, I need to go down here and um, I've got my text for uh, the labels at the top, so author date relative risk. Um, and now my labels for the subgroups. So uh, I'm going to put in sleep depth, not classified, circadian rhythm, abnormalities, insomnia, obstructive sleep, apnea. And notice where I placed them. I've got placed them at um, the uh, left, right is minus six and a half, and the top bottom is 60, 39, 28, and 14. All right, so the bottom one is 14, and you notice this was 3 through 13, and so uh, the bottom one here is going to be at 14, which is one up, and that's obstructive sleep apnea, and there it is on 14. All right, so it's now going to be the label. It's six, six and a half left, and it's in row 14, and it's that label, and notice that we went through 3 to 13 here. Okay, and then uh, 28, you notice that it was 17 to 27, so 28 is going to be insomnia, and here is insomnia. So I just placed them in these uh, spots one row above the data. 
then I need these uh, subgroup meta-analyses. So first I've got um, sleep A, and I run a meta-analysis with uh, sleep DAP, but the subset is for disorder 1. So I've got four disorders. And then I run B with disorder is equal to 2. Notice the double equals there. That means, you know, it has this value. This means subset the original data with all four um, levels in it and just analyze two here and then three and then four and each of these has a separate name. So then uh, I can add the polygons which are these little guys here. Uh, add poly sleep A row is 40 and a half give me um, three quarters size and uh, make sure that it's in the same metric as the rest of the graph and then uh, give me a label of our E model for the subgroup. So at 40.5, which is up towards the top, it's actually, you know, uh, where we at? so 38 to 42. So um, in between those, 40 and a half is here. So uh, I want to give it a little space on either side so that it's not um, just run in with the uh, with the rest of them. So there's the a and it's 1.62 and it goes from 1.38 to 1.91 um, and I've got for B then I put that uh, at uh, 29 and a half and there it is okay and that's um, that's really all there is to it uh, except for this won't appear in a window it will appear in a file so I have to go find the file and I have to remember to turn the um, thing off here. So I turned it on uh, here. So this is saying I want you to output to a PDF instead of output outputting to the screen. And when I'm done, I need to say device off, and then it comes up and says, OK, it's off. All right, and so that created this graph for me. And um, it's this is pretty good. This will. Um, I think satisfy the um, co-author and the journal.